Hey everyone, so I just came back from watching The Rise of Skywalker a few hours ago and I feel like I need to make a video on it. Uh, initially I wasn't gonna do anything on The Rise of Skywalker, I thought I would sit and let the movie meditate in my head a little bit, but then I realized that my opinions on this film are fairly set and really if I waited one more day it wouldn't really change anything. Um, so I thought I'd sit down and I'd give you some of my thoughts on The Rise of Skywalker. A few months ago I made a video uh, talking about some of the key concerns I had with The Rise of Skywalker, why I was worried about how this movie was gonna turn out. And honestly, without being like an egotistical asshole, I was 100% right. Uh, every single concern and bad idea I thought they would have in this movie they have in this movie and I gotta unfortunately tell you really disappointedly with a heavy heart that this movie is an absolute goddamn mess. Currently this movie is the second worst rated Star Wars movie in the franchise, in the main franchise after The Phantom Menace and let me tell you as much as it pains me to say this that criticism and that kind of score is 100% warranted. I've never seen a Star Wars movie, aside from The Phantom Menace, which to be fair I was six when I saw The Phantom Menace and really I was the target audience so I didn't really kind of realize how bad that movie was until later. In terms of you know having an understanding this is the worst Star Wars movie I have seen. Not because of the technicality of it, I'll get into some of the positives but you like you know there's nothing like visually or acting wise wrong with this movie. The issues are more fundamental than that. It really comes from a franchise that I think was doomed from the start or like a trilogy of movies that was absolutely from the ground up doomed to fail. So I'm going to keep this review or thoughts, I guess this is a review, I'm going to keep this review spoiler free because if I'm honest with you you do not need to spoil anything about the plot uh, to kind of examine why this movie is bad and some of the key plot points that I will be talking about have already been shown in the trailer so if you're worried about spoilers do not worry because this is going to be a spoiler free video. So what are the core issues with The Rise of Skywalker? Well the biggest one, issue number one with this movie I would say is that it's absolutely crammed to the brink with content. I have never seen a movie that is this full, I mean full of story beats, to the point where it becomes extremely difficult to follow, exhausting and it becomes extremely detrimental to the plot. Uh, it honestly feels like, and I was with a couple of friends and I told one of them after that, it really feels like they had the amount of content from like Infinity War and Endgame and they were forced to cram that much story into a two and a half hour movie. This, this movie isn't even two and a half hours, I think it's like two hours and 20 minutes. It's just, it's just like it's difficult to explain if you haven't seen it but so much happens within the first half an hour of this film. There's so much like exposition, fades, new planets, new story beats, critical moments, it's just like exposition, scene, fade, exposition, scene, fade, new planet, new planet, new planet. If you thought that Rogue One had a problem with jumping around on too many planets, whew, let me tell you, this movie, you are going to hate this movie. And whereas Rogue One, I thought, was flawed in that respect, in this movie it's even more distracting because you do not even have time to process any of the key story beats. Like there's an exposition scene and already bam there's something else and you're in the middle of something else. Like you cannot even begin to process what the fuck is happening, you are already getting bombarded with something else and that continues throughout the entire movie and by the end it just became extremely distracting. And it really feels like because of this uh, that they do not wrap up like a third of the plot points that have been introduced in the previous two movies. They do, I mean I'm sure they do, but again it's just so overwhelming with everything it throws at you that you cannot even keep up with who's been like, whose story be has been wrapped up, like what has been explained, what hasn't been explained, because it's just 
truly an assault on your senses. It really feels like somebody, you know, at Disney, some executive said that you cannot have a movie that's longer than like two and a half hours and they were forced to work with this. I mean, the opening text alone, the low text crawl, is a prime example of it. It's three paragraphs and it throws so much at you, some of it without any context or explanation, that you're like, wait, wait, what? Wait, this just happened and that just happened? It's kind of a mess. Speaking of the opening crawl, the opening crawl uh, mentions the second key critical point I have with this movie. And again, this is not a spoiler because it has been in the trailer that Emperor Palpatine is back. Yep, good old Palpy is now once again the main villain of this movie and I guess this entire trilogy essentially invalidating anything that happened in Return of the Jedi. But again, that is kind of more story related. You know, I, I don't want to be like chewing uh, story details, but it's obvious to everyone that essentially the end of Return of the Jedi has been thrown out of the window, mainly because The Last Jedi has left this trilogy without a clear antagonist. I mean, the death of Snoke has really dealt a massive blow to this entire franchise because you have this movie and what can you do? Like, it's too late to set up a new character, a new antagonist. The only thing you can do is bring in someone old and they decided to go with someone really old, i.e. Palpatine. Now, to be fair, Ian McDermott is fantastic in the role. He is as good as Palpatine as he's ever been. However, the character is absolutely pointless in this movie. He is not explained. He's not given context. He's there. Just Emperor survived. And you know, this is maybe something that gets into spoiler territory. But I mentioned in my previous video that I made, I'm sure they're going to have some stupid explanation on why Palpatine is back. They do not fucking have anything. They never even give any hints as to how the hell Palpatine is back. He says one line regarding it, and I'm sorry if you consider this a spoiler. Uh, I truly apologize. They never say anything about it. He's just there. He's, it, he's just there. You know, it's like, you know, fucking Battlefront 2, which you're seeing right now. If I just decided to, like, respawn as the Emperor, and now I'm him. He's back. He's been blown up by an X-Wing, and yeah, he's just back, because I spent all my points on him. I mean, the dude, he fell into a reactor, exploded, then the place where he exploded, exploded, and he's just there. Uh, yeah, the inclusion of Palpatine has been an incredibly baffling choice, and thankfully, and I'm saying this thankfully, despite the fact that I really enjoy Ian McDermott as Palpatine, the reaction to him being back has been extremely negative, generally. Really, I hope it shows Disney that you cannot just like plop some antagonist out of a previous film and put them in a new movie and expect decent results, because you're not going to get it. This kind of thing with Palpatine and having a lack of clear antagonists really transitions into my next critical issue with this movie, is that this movie and this entire trilogy of movies has really felt like a pissing context between two directors. And I guess this comes from another key issue of this trilogy not having a clear overarching story. Uh, but really, there's a definite rivalry that is felt between J.J. Abrams and Ryan Johnson. It was felt in The Last Jedi as well, but it's felt even more here. The Last Jedi really felt like Ryan Johnson saying, you know what, JJ, you set all of this up, fuck you, I'm gonna do what I wanna do. And now in this movie, it really feels like JJ is going, you know what, Ryan, you set all of this up, fuck you, I'm gonna do what I want. And it really, again, feels like, you know, two kids playing with their Star Wars action figures and disagreeing between what kind of storyline to play out and what they want to do with these characters. You know, it just leads to a movie where nothing can be wrapped up because the two directors clearly hate where the other one was taking the franchise. And, you know, I cannot even say that J.J. Abrams is entirely to blame for this. I mean, the dude is famous for never being able to wrap up his stories in a satisfying way. But really... Ryan Johnson did not give him much to work with. All the antagonists were either dead 
or made into complete bitches, I'm talking about General Hux at the end of The Last Jedi, basically most of the old guard was dead um, and nothing happened. I think one of the critical main errors of The Last Jedi is that it takes place right after The Force Awakens and the entire movie feels like it takes place in like two days. Because of that, nothing is expanded upon and nothing is wrapped up. I think the biggest strength of The Empire Strikes Back is that it both continued the story but also wrapped up some story beats. I mean, you really get a perfect balance of having an expanded universe and also having a deeper understanding of the world. Because you got none of that in The Last Jedi, J.J. Abrams has to wrap up like two movies worth of plot holes and loose ends in a single movie. And you know, I haven't gone back and looked at some of the details, but I have heard that this movie is full of plot holes. I mean, I can name two or three off the top of my head, but apparently there's way more plot holes. Like, apparently this movie is full of plot holes, but how could it not be full of plot holes where The Last Jedi didn't do anything? It's such a meandering movie that there was no way this movie was going to be able to successfully do anything with all the plot threads. And that's why it's extra baffling, going back to my previous point, that this movie is as short as it is. I mean... Even in three hours, it would have been difficult to do anything with all the loose ends that have been set up. And you know, this pissing context feeling goes beyond that as well. The characters, for example. None of the characters that have been introduced in The Last Jedi are basically even in the movie. I mean, they are relegated to background characters. Instead, we have new characters that are introduced. But again, because of the nature of this movie... None of them are given room to breathe and we never get a chance to get to know them be because bam, we're moving right on to the next scene. It really is, it really is just a mess. And I could go on, I could go on much further uh, talking about some of the key issues, the convoluted way the bad guys are defeated, the disservice that this movie does to certain characters the extremely unsatisfying way that things wrap up, but all of those would be getting into spoiler territories. All I wanted to say and all I wanted to bring out of this video is that what Disney has done with the Star Wars franchise has been absolutely sad. And I'd say that truly as a massive Star Wars fan. I mean, if we look back at the last couple of years, what have we actually gotten from Disney? We have gotten basically one good Star Wars game, which is Jedi Fallen Order. We have gotten a decent television series, even though I think The Mandalorian is a little bit overrated. And we have gotten one movie that I can say is actually good, which is Rogue One. Aside from that, all of the movies have been either painfully mediocre or straight up bad. I mean, I think The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, Solo and now this movie are all incredibly weak to varying degrees and Weak in a sense that they are mediocre. I mean, this is still Star Wars. There's still an underlying core sort of magic that Comes along with the films, but these films are all painfully generic and it's painfully clear that Disney has no idea what to do with the Star Wars license they are trying to make this into another Marvel expanded universe, but it's not working. It's not working because directors are fighting, directors are getting fired and changed and like plots are getting rewritten like nine months before a movie's release. Everybody's unhappy, everybody is overworked. There's no overarching vision and it's just a mess. And it's really sad because nothing will ever change. Uh, there is no incentive for Disney to change anything because despite the fact these movies are massive successes. I mean, even this movie, from what I've seen with the box office numbers, is going to be a massive hit. And really, if you can pump out mediocre movies every year or every two years and still have it sell and still have people go to it, why even change anything? I mean, it's really, you know, this is getting into a different topic, but this really kind of is a negative reflection of the current state of the big big budget movie blockbuster scene 
is that people will basically go to see anything if it's ha if it has like Star Wars or Marvel or DC attached to it. Think about it. If from now on every single Marvel movie was a mediocre piece of shit, nothing would change. The franchise would still make boatloads, and I mean absolute boatloads of money. And I think really that's the thing that Disney has kind of been realizing with Star Wars. I mean, they can pump out movies. Apparently the next Star Wars movie is going to be announced in January and it's going to be coming out in 2022. And I'm sure that there's going to be some other movies and television series and whatever in between. So it's really sad. It's really sad that Star Wars, which is really something that has a lot of meaning to people, even the prequel trilogy, you can see that there is a soul behind it and there is creativity behind it. Their franchise like this has been relegated to a cyclical, overproduced, uh, bullshit, homogenized movie that does the most to appeal to everyone but really ends up appealing to no one. It's really kind of sad, but again, this is kind of jumping into a different topic. I'm gonna end my rant here. Sorry if this has not been the most structured video, but really I got home a couple of hours ago and I felt like I had to record my thoughts before I kind of forget some of the details. Do I recommend you to see this movie? Honestly, I cannot. I would say wait until it comes out on streaming or Blu-ray or something because it's, I, cannot, I cannot recommend it. Oh, I didn't mention some of the positives. Uh, the acting in general is good. Adam Driver especially is good as Kylo Ren. Ian McDermott as Palpatine. The effects are good. There are some very flashy scenes. C-3PO and Chewbacca are probably two of the best characters uh, this movie has to offer. Oh, and I didn't even mention that this movie completely squanders Finn and Poe Dameron, but again, I don't want to get into too many details. There are some good aspects about it, the visuals, some of the new characters, some of the kind of side characters from the old movies they use well, but that's about all I can say. I'm kind of sad, not gonna, not gonna lie, I felt this coming, but even then I was disappointed. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Sorry that this video has been so negative. Have you seen this movie? What did you think about it? Because I'm really interested in what people think. Apparently the audience score is at like 88. So apparently the audience is like this movie. But I'm interested to hear what you guys think. So I'll wrap it up here. Thanks for watching. And I'll see all of you next time. Goodbye.